Firth and Ivy Madness out of the Crimson Wind. Well, Princeton not a team that really goes deep off the bench. Try and get them into some early foul trouble. You can do that with the bigs underneath. Push the pace here at home. Good crowd. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And be connected on defense. No easy threes for a Princeton team. Feels like they're due to have a big three-point shooting night. And they are one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. Try to get an early touch for Ajibo. Going to be an early jump ball. And the Tigers get an early turnover. After Harvard won the jump, it is a sold-out crowd here at Levitis Pavilion for the Tigers and the Crimson. That's what Ajibo needs to watch out for when he gets into the paint, dribbling it down, scrappy forwards underneath that are going to go for steals. Just keep it up there, try and go off the paint, use your size. Tyler Simon into the starting lineup, a little banged up is Harvard. No Chandler P.J., who's been a regular starter, and no Thomas Petit, who's shaken up in the Columbia game. Hard drive, good contest at the rim by Chisa McPara, turning away the dunk attempt from Caden Pierce. Yeah, good help defense. Ajabo is going to have to defend at 20 feet with the skill set of this Princeton team. Louis Lesbon short on the three. Rebound falls to Zevian Lee. Pierce a very versatile big, but going to have to contest with the size of Ajabo, who did not play the first time these two teams met in Ivy League play. Here's Lee working against the length of Lesmon. Got it back into the corner. Three-pointer on the way. No good. And Akpara the rebound. First miss for Blake Peters. That's Princeton right there. All spacing. Five-out offense. Trying to open up for a three. Akpara fakes the three. Drives inside. Elevates. Missed with the right hand. Rebound kept alive. Saved on the end line by Zach Martini. Pierce. Forces Ajabo out of the paint. Lee on the drive. Lays it up and in. Great cut by Zevian Lee. And that's why Harvard needs to be so connected defensively. Prince and a team that likes to use spacing to set up cuts to open players in the paint. Too easy right there for Zevian Lee. Classic movement from the Tigers. Gets the opening bucket a little less than two minutes in. Mack double teamed out high. Got it away to Akpara. Winds up a three. It's in and out. Ajabo with the offensive board. Lesmond drives, kicks, Simon out of the corner. He will attack. Finger roll with the right hand. That was a smart play originally by Lesmond to fake the three as Princeton was scrambling back defensively on the offensive rebound. Tyler Simon, a lot of dribble drives early here from the Crimson. Junior from Houston is going to be important today. Only averages about three and a half points per game, but he's going to play a much larger role for Harvard tonight. And big time in the absence of Chandler P.J. playing that three position. Tough made away from Lee, winds up short, and Akpara could not reel in the rebound. Ends up gifting Princeton an extra possession. Yeah, that's one that's going to be frustrating for the Crimson. That's what you want to force Princeton into, tough contested twos. And Chenderson, over 225 wins, now in his 12th season coaching the Tigers, led them on that great run to the Sweet 16 last year. Martini in the corner. Lee off the help, drives, hands it off, Pierce, he is stuffed by Ajimo. And there is the difference maker inside for Harvard. Well, Harvard doing a great job on help defense. Princeton, when they get into the paint, they want to draw you over, and then backdoor cut wide open, Harvard. Too many layers there, great job by Ajibo, Simon in the area as well to influence. Ivy League leader, two and a half blocks per game. He hasn't played the whole Ivy League season as a three-pointer falls for Caden Pierce. But you'd have to think, even in the time he has played, he's going to garner some Defensive Player of the Year consideration. Akpara stripped by Peters, fight for it on the floor. Kick ball on Ajaba on uh, Akpara, and it will be Princeton ball, already their second takeaway on defense. A good start for Princeton, knocking down that triple. It's been a struggle in the last couple of games, shooting just 25% from behind the arc and wins against Brown and Yale. They don't need much room, just a little pin down screen, just a foot of space, and Pierce can knock him down. That's going to be important as well to draw Ajibo away from the basket. Another three ball here. That's good. Pierce again strikes from deep, 32% from behind the arc this year, but he's got two tonight, and Princeton with the early six-point lead. Lesmond flips it up and gets the roll. Tough angle on the layup by Lesmond. Yeah, both buckets for Harvard off tough dribble drives, but for Princeton, that's what they want to do. Put you on one side of the floor, back you down, start the post up from 20 feet. Peters fires. That one rims out. Early heat check from Peters that time. 
Back slowed on the dribble by Matalaco. Double team. Akpara drives. Trying to power his way to the rim. Finds a double team. Kick out Simon a three. Short. Rebound inside by Mack. And he'll circle it back out. He drives a quick three and delivers. How about Malik Mack with a quick trigger? When the shot went up, you're thinking, reset it. Press 20 for the Crimson, but Malik Mack makes shots that are not advisable. He is just so athletic and knocked down from everywhere. Pierce fakes around the Lee to the corner. Peters delivers. Great ball movement by the Tigers and a corner three for Blake Peters. That was the off-ball movement, too, that really set things up there. Harvard just a little bit confused defensively. And three triples for Princeton. As Long swallowed up inside. Harvard has to reset with Mack again. Simon tries to answer. Can't do it. And Lee rips the rebound away from Les Mons. Tigers with three early threes. Lee for another. Yes, sir! Four three-pointers for the Tigers in the opening five minutes and Princeton doubling up Harvard. They only made six in the game against Brown, six against Yale, and through five minutes already four triples. Akpara can't answer on the other end. Harvard trying to go haymaker for haymaker here and doesn't have the answer early on. Alaco, the trailer, gets inside to the corner. Extra pass. Peters swallowed up. Good recovery there by Mack. Alaco's turn. That one was deflected. I think Ajibo got a piece. Back off the ball screen, has Pierce in front of him, crosses over, drives, hands it off. Ajibo elevates and scores. Nice dump down there by Mack, and Ajibo has his first bucket. Yeah, good awareness as well from Malik Mack. When he saw they had Pierce on him, he knew that there was going to be a mismatch underneath for Ajibo, and they exploit it quickly. Three subs waiting to check in at the next whistle for Harvard. Martini gobbled up by Akpara. Pierce with 13 to shoot. Looking for options. Pierce hands off to Lee with seven to shoot. Lee back to Pierce. Straight away three. In and out. And back in again. A friendly bounce for number three. Caden Pierce with his third three. There's nobody inbounding the ball yet for the Crimson. In time coming off the clock. But Caden Pierce coming out hot with nine points on three threes. And the Tigers lead it by eight. You need to be decisive in what you do off ball screens because Princeton has guys that can stop and pop, hit from distance. Saw it against Cornell. Princeton has the same makeup as well. Whip to the corner. Lesmond fakes the three. Lee shuts off on the drive. Lesmond back to Akpara. He fakes the three. Attacks the paint. Hangs. Missed the shot and is fouled. He'll go to the line. That'll get us to a timeout. Seven minutes gone here in the opening half. The Tigers shooting the lights out here at Levides, leading by eight. You know, when, when Title IX was passed, I was about five years old. And low double digits in an Ivy League game this season. Eight points, three of 11 shooting, and clearly was still working his way back to game speed, game shape, coming back from that mono diagnosis. Well, it's the three-point shooting that really stands out where he had to get back in the swing of things early in Ivy League play. A lot of what Harvard does from behind the arc goes through Malik Mack. They had a great start to the year from distance. It's really dipped down, but as Malik Mack has gone, so has this Harvard offense. Harvard with some pressure, almost took it away. Mack gambling on the steal. Lee just able to secure that pass. Only one change for Princeton. Dalen Davis, first year out of Chicago, into the lineup for the Tigers. Malako spins, Akpara stays in front. Three new players on for Harvard. Denim Wojcik, Xavier Nesbitt, and Luka Ace Nesteski returning after missing both games last weekend. Lee pulls up and drills a three in Ace Nesteski's face. Oh, you think you have a forward on, you drive it to him, take him to the rim. Xavier Lee. He gets a couple to go down, and it is going to be a long night defensively, and Princeton has found their distance. Already six made threes. Wojcik fakes the three. Akpara takes it and knocks it down. So 
much needed answer on Harvard's end. Right now the Crimson just got to find a way to slow the three point party on the Princeton end. And an important make there from Akpar as well, because now Princeton's going to have to force a little bit tighter from him. The dribble drives will be there and the kickouts to open shooters, but yeah, six for nine out of the gates. Harvard needs to find a way. Another open look. That one's left short, tipped up. H. Nesteski able to pull down the rebound. First year from Australia. Getting back in the lineup. Pass whipped inside. Too tall for Akpara off the rim. It comes down to Pierce. And even though it was a miss on that last three, that is still a great look from Jack Scott. Davis the drive. Kicks it out. Pierce has already hit three times from deep. Lee. Rolaco, Scott dumps it inside, Pierce trying to back down on Akpara, turns, fakes, back to the right hand, the flip shot is short. Akpara got elevated, but Pierce didn't go into him. It was a good job by Xavier Nesbitt as well, he was calling for the help defense from Akpara, there was a mismatch underneath temporarily. Mack drives and spins it in. Good patience for Mack to evade the double team there. He's been doubled a lot in Ivy League play in his... This season's going on, so is his poise. The experience playing out of doubles, knowing how to pull the strings offensively when he has two in his face. As well as Princeton has shot the ball, hard to believe. Harvard's only down by four here. Lee, shake and bang, step back, in and out. And we got a whistle and a foul on Wojcik, fighting Pierce in the rebounding battle. That'll be his first, first team foul against Harvard, and that will get us to another timeout. 10.44 to go here in Cambridge. Princeton shooting lights out from deep, led by Lee and Pierce. Hi guys, Chisholm Okpara, class of 2026. But clinched, hard to think that the Tigers are somehow going to find their way out. And a win tonight against Harvard would officially lock them in. And then really it's just who's going to take that four seed. Fadeaway jumper rolls out off the arm of Alaco. Wojcik back the other way, hands off to Les Mon. Mack. Guarded tightly by Alaco, powers him into the paint and draws contact. Malik Mack not shying away from the physical challenge there. Now Harvard has had a lot of aggressive dribble drives in this game, backing down Princeton, trying to put them in uncomfortable one-on-one -on -one defensive situations. This is a Princeton team that's really taken a step forward defensively from last year's group, leading the Ivy League, holding opponents under 65 per game. Akpara back in after the quick breather, powers his way to the rim, kicks it out, Wojcik fakes the three, drives down the right side, hangs, can't hit, rebound, tipped out, and a foul going to be called. I believe that's on Wojcik. If so, that's going to be his second. So already two on the South Carolina native. I'm going to look at Tommy Emaker approaching his 300th win as head coach of Harvard. Most wins in program history as a head coach as well. He's redefined success for this Harvard program. Tyler Simon back in. In the starting lineup tonight, he was also a focal point. Had a couple of good looks offensively as well. Here's Davis circling it. Back to Alaco. Davis drives, spins, floats for the free throw line. That bounces out. Ever since that hot start, Princeton's missed his last four shots. Good job, Harvard contesting. Les Mon, quick trigger, too strong on the three. It'll bounce out of play. Well, Harvard scoreless, or Princeton scoreless, excuse me, for about a three-minute stretch. And still shooting six of 11 from three. They've only made one two-point shot. Miscommunication there between Martini and Scott. Don't see that a lot. Again, Princeton team that only averages about nine giveaways a game. That's their first. And a team that is just so secure in what they do offensively. They jack up a ton of threes. They're near the top of the nation. Almost half of their field goal attempts this season have been three-pointers. That's fifth most in the nation. Para hands it off for Mack. Nifty crossover, fakes the kick and scores. Oh, Malik back, playing with it on a string. You just see right there the difference in this Harvard team that Malik back is back to 100% compared to the game to start Ivy League play at Princeton. Harvard back within two. Scott swallowed up by Lismon. Davis Martini hands it off for Peters. Up top, Alaco, seven to shoot. 
Has to take on Mack, and a hand check foul called. Bail out there at the end. It's the first on Mack. It is the third team foul on the Crimson. Now you said it a bailout. Harvard defense so well for 26 seconds. Princeton getting late in that possession. Harvard defending the perimeter well, not falling for any of the backdoor cuts in the support defense has been there for the Crimson. And Mitch Henderson not messing around. He's going to bring Pierce and Lee right back onto the floor. Those have been the two guys going for the Tigers early on. Meanwhile, you just saw Malik Mack to the bench, his first break of the day. Pierce with it from the elbow. Hands off to Lee. Drives. Over three Crimson he hits. Already ten points for Xavier Lee. That's just one where you tip your cap. Harvard defensively, they force Princeton into some Contested twos, that one right there, nothing you can do. Hand in his face, just an athletic make. Simon off the quick pull-up, drains a triple. If he can do that, that's going to be welcome offense for the Crimson. And big even going forward as well to get Tyler Simon more involved offensively. Five points already, good range, Harvard. He's had some guys knock down a couple of threes. 10-2 run right now for Harvard. They switched it up to a zone. Lee fakes the three to the corner. Open look, Martini. Got it. First bucket for Zach Martini. It's the seventh three-pointer of the first half for Princeton. And one the Tigers needed to end this scoring run. Ajabo, quick kick out. Simon, again, got another. Two in a row for Tyler Simon. Back to a one-point game. That's his spot. Very similar make for Tyler Simon, who is in a big role offensively tonight. Pierce fakes the three, gives it up to Lee. They hand off again. Lee drives to the corner. Martini back out to Davis. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Pierce wants Ajabo. Goes underneath and scores. Quick first step by Caden Pierce. At Harvard growing in confidence defensively. Another one, Princeton. Not a team that really pushes the tempo, but everything has been hard to get ever since that quick start for the Tigers. Simon drives, hands it off, Nesbitt traveled. Just that little shuffle step before he put the ball to the floor. Tigers will take it back. Harvard showing no fear, going at the defending Ivy League champs. Back-to-back -back threes from Tyler Simon and the Crimson are within three here in Cambridge. We should worry about ChatGPT, but we should not panic about ChatGPT. My name is Steve Pinker. I am a professor of psychology at Harvard University. Princeton, for Harvard, really like what they're doing offensively. In the same way in football, running the ball well sets up the pass. The dribble drives are now setting up the kickouts for some open threes. Tyler Simon has made a couple, and Princeton, the looks they're getting, not as good as they were in the opening five minutes. But to your point, felt like Princeton was due for a big night from behind the arc. They have started 7 of 12. Already more threes than they made in the Brown and Yale game where they made six apiece. They made 15 in the first meeting against the Crimson. Yeah, the Yale game was a terrific battle. Princeton really won it by virtue of their defense. Pierce just muscling his way past Xavier Nesbitt draws the foul on the first year. First on Nesbitt, 14 foul on Harvard. So 14 fouls on the Crimson, but three of them are on backup. So... You feel pretty good about that if you're Tommy Amaker? Yeah, you do, absolutely. The rotation, the way it's working right now for Harvard. Good cohesion right now defensively. Really like Tyler Simon, what he's been able to do. His length and versatility around the perimeter has been impressive. He's added a couple threes as well. Lee on the backdoor cut, blocked by Mack, but he blocked it in. Lee got that up to the backboard so quickly, even the touch from Mack didn't matter. Already a dozen points for Zevian Lee, 11 from Caden Pierce. They have been the leaders so far for Princeton. Akpara going into Pierce, hits the floater. And Harvard has been able to get some presence in the paint. Jisam Akpara, just a matchup nightmare. His size, his physicality, the way he can back down. Both teams shooting 50% or better now in the first half. Malako kicks it out. Peters a three, too strong. And Akpara out jumps Martini for the rebound. Crimson can look to tie with a three. Akpara open, drives into the lane. Got it knocked up in the air. Reach in foul, though, called. 
This is either Peters or Martini. They'll give it to Peters. First on the junior, only the third in team foul on Princeton. They commit the third fewest fouls per game in the nation, only 12.9 a game. They do everything at a very high level discipline-wise. They don't turn the ball over much. They don't follow you. They don't beat themselves whatsoever. Ace Nesteski back in, giving Ajabo a break. Mack wants it in the post, turns to its face. Gets to the middle of the lane, lost the ball, but a foul first. Alaco called for his second foul, so that was one of our keys. Try to get this Princeton team in foul trouble, and that's the second on Alaco, who's one of their top defenders. We saw early in this game as well where Harvard made three substitutions off the first media timeout. That's something that Princeton just does not have the luxury of. They do not go that deep off the bench. Akpara open off the inbound, missed the reverse layup, though, and the rebound comes down to Pierce. Harvard had hit seven of its last eight before that miss. Lee has Ace Nesteski in the switch. Wants it back. Going to go at the first year. Gave it up. Alaco. Lee again. Drives. Elevates. Kick out. Finds its way to Peters. Down to 10 to shoot. Lee wants it again. It reverses the other way to Martini. Inside to Pierce with five to shoot. Going at Lesmond. and He's double teamed. Simon ties him up. Lee has to throw it up from midcourt. And he banks it in. You gotta be kidding me! My goodness, if you're Harvard, what else can you do? You get a contest, swipe the ball away, defend so well for 29.9 seconds. Ace Nesteski with a layup on the other end, but this Xavier Lee guy is magic. Uh, the biggest step of anyone in the Ivy League coming off last year. Good potentially showed off the bench a season ago. But now as a starter, he is right in the conversation of Ivy League Player of the Year. Pierce all alone on the drive, lays it up and in with the left hand. That's a set play right there. It's all Princeton on the dribble handoff. Fake and then just cut through the double team. Tigers back up six. It's a two-man show for Princeton right now. Akpara hit the deck. Mack gets to the rim and scores. Harvard doing their best to answer blow for blow right now, but they got to find a way to slow this Princeton attack down, specifically Lee and Pierce. Yeah, Xavier Lee 15 points, Pierce with 13. It's been the bulk of the offense. Say they spread the wealth, that has not been the case so far in this game. Well, they haven't needed to. Nice inside out dribble. Lee lost the handle, still able to get it out to Martini. Peters in the corner, swallowed up. Martini lost the handle again. Harvard comes away with a steal. Mack to push. Simon now slows it down. Simon catches, waits, drives, hangs, and will go to the free throw line. Good patience again. Tyler Simon going to earn himself some more free throws when we come back. Princeton getting everything and a little bit more. Check out Xavier Lee from beyond Steph Curry range. Timeout here from Cambridge. Black History Month is important to me because it. The not. And you see there, it's the only Ivy League team to have the same starting lineup for every game this year. Got to think it's probably one of the only teams in the country that's been able to boast the same starting five all season. We just think the battle of attrition in a long season now getting into February. We're talking about games 23 of the season to have the same five guys start every game. It's not just important, but also takes a little bit of luck as well. Tyler Simon makes one of two of the line back to a three-point ball game Despite Xavier Lee and Keaton Pierce going off in this first half Harvard's been able to keep it to a one-two possession game Martini tries a three that one too strong and the rebound goes over the top and out of bounds That's what Princeton wants to do Load up one side of the floor and on the weak side back you down with a 20-foot post up And when you get into the paint when the help defense starts to commit kick out Good look for three there for Martini. Harvard going a little smaller here. Ford guard lineup with Mack, Wojcik, Simon, and Lesmon. Kick out here. Wojcik going to launch from deep and catches the front iron. Lee almost interfered with that. Well, he was ready to catch it right at the rim. Maybe thinking it was going to be an air ball. Lee from straight on. Going to go to the free throw line. Nearly a four-point play. as Lesmon went crashing into him. Fifth team foul on Harvard. The first on Lesmon and Lee. Well, he's done just about everything else perfect. He's also an 87% free throw shooter. Yeah, tops the Ivy League there. You just see on the switch, Les Moen was just a little bit late. His momentum trying to contest that three.
Ranks third in the Ivy League in scoring. Third in assists. Second in assisted turnover ratio. Hard to think he's not going to be on the very, very short list for Ivy League Player of the Year. A rare free throw miss from Lee. As Martini will step out. Jack Scott returns for the Tigers. He makes two of three, 17 in the first half for Zavian Lee, as you noted, Tyler, already near his scoring average per game. Yeah, there were spurts last year where he showed a lot of optimism in his game, but the step from his rookie season to now as a sophomore has been magical first year as a starter. Wojcik, they dare him to shoot again. He drives and kicks. Simon curls his way inside, can't score with the left hand. Looks like that right hand was available. He tried to switch it back to the left and put too much on it. Another good look for Tyler Simon. He's drained a couple of threes. The dribble drive has led to a bucket. Lee and Pierce again playing the two-man game. Lee fires and buries another. 20 points for Xavier Lee. Tommy Amaker wants a timeout. Not happy with the defense, not closing out there. Miscommunication between Malik Mack and Denim Wojcik. One went with the cut, well, they both went with the cone contest. And for Xavier Lee, the ninth time this year he's been in 20 points. Princeton hit 10 threes in the second half against Harvard, now flirting with it in the first half. You'd say Yale held, quote unquote, him to 19.7 rebounds and five assists in a Princeton win last Saturday. Mack off the catch, puts it to the floor, double team comes, and contact again. That's going to be on Peters, I believe. That's going to be his second foul. They said 23, now they change it to 24. That is Peters. So two on Peters, two on Alonco. Peters will go to the bench. Dalen Davis comes back in. Alonco still out there playing with two fouls, and he is on Mack right now. That's surprising, especially late in this first half. Some two foul participation. Go at him. Some trust from Mitch Henderson that his senior not going to commit another foul. Apara goes at Pierce. And an offensive foul called on Apara for the hook. That's going to be the first of the sophomore. 16 fouls now, both teams at the limit. Yeah, you just see right there with the left hand hooking around. Caden Pierce did well. Just usher him underneath. And then when he's trying to get to daylight, just did it illegally. Drought here for the Crimson toward the end of the first half. Scoreless for two minutes. Lee stop and start. Double comes. Kick out Pierce. Ace Nesteski trying to take the passing window away. For Scott. Back to Pierce. Five to shoot. Pierce. Davis has to take the three. That runs out. Again, if it's been anyone other than Lee or Pierce, they have not found the rhythm yet. Mac, quick pull up in transition, wide left. And then the foul is called on East Nesteski going crashing into Lee. And that's a tough foul because it's one and one the other way. Yeah, for Malik Mack as well, just trying to go quick when he has a one on one. He's been doubled most of the times up the floor. So when he's had the shooting opportunities, he wants to take them. Martini comes back onto the floor, replaces Scott. Another chance at the line for Lee. And Jimmy is tops in the Ivy League's free throw shooter. Princeton as a team, not only best in the Ivy League, but one of the best in the nation. 81% from the free throw line. That is number two nationally, only behind Villanova. They just do the things that put games away. Making free throws, they don't turn the ball over. Well, and it makes it extremely difficult, you think, even in a close game, end of game situation, if you're trailing, well, you don't really have someone you can target to try to put them at the free throw line. Because they all shoot free throws well. And they all make it at a high level. There's no really matchup guys you're looking to go at. You're 50% free throw shooters. Princeton with its largest lead. Mack tried to tip the return home, couldn't get it. Well defended by Lee there. Now the Tigers will slow the game in the final minute. High screen for Peters. He keeps on going. Polanco for Pierce. Lee pulls it back out. Works off the ball screen. Pulls up another three. That one won't go. 
Rebound tipped around. Davis fought for. Foul called. That's going to be on Simon. There's Dalen Davis showing the hustle and winning the 50-50 battle there. Yeah, just a little bit more communication needed from the Crimson off the ball screen. If they're going to play drop coverage, you can't. The way Xavier Lee's making it, but just a little bit late by Ace Nesteski. And it's a hustle foul there on Tyler Simon late to the ball. Davis has been on the Ivy League honor roll each of the past three weeks. Playing a more critical role. He's another guy, even though he doesn't play a ton coming off the bench, you feel like you know next year maybe will be sort of the next step like Xavier Lee took this year where he's going to get more time and probably going to flourish as a result. They have two starters in the lineup, but this is still such a very young team for Princeton. Five sophomores, five first years. Yeah, that second year jump, we saw it with Xavier Lee. He looks like a candidate. Jacob Huggins at 6'8", 2'10". He sure looks the build as well. Tigers now have their largest lead on the strength of a 9-0 run. They lead by a dozen. Final possession of the first half. Double shows on Mack with six. Into the corner, Simon. He's trapped. Kick out deflected. Pierce throwing it up. That's going to land well short. Caught the underside of here against Brown at home. Came all the way back to have a chance to win it. Came up short here at home in one of their early Ivy League games. So they will not shirk at a 12-point deficit, but against Princeton, it is no easy feat. Chisa McPar going to the rim to start things off. Floats it up and in. Let's talk right out of halftime. Get the ball in Chisa McPar's hand. He can make things happen. Getting downhill, his physicality. And Malik Mack gets it right to him, and Akpar does the rest. Here is Lee going to the basket early on. He hangs, can't hit off the window, but he's right there for his own follow-up. I think that ankle's okay. Yeah, that was an immediate sign right there for him saying he's good to go. 24 points at 33 in the first meeting. Les Mon short on a three into the waiting hands of Zach Martini. Just early in the shot clock. Take a three that comes up empty. That is going to drive a Harvard coaching staff crazy, especially coming out of a half. You want to do things that are inside the offense. Now to Locko. Hands it to the corner. Blake Peters to Lee. Up top, Pierce. Hands off to Lee. It's been their show all night. Alaco Lee again drives, floats, rejected by Ajabo. He climbed the mountain and shut it down. Pierce, though, able to get the loose ball. Possession did not change according to the table. So it is a shot clock violation, and that is only the third Princeton turnover. Well, a great job by Harvard to hedge the ball screen that was set by Caden Pierce. Immediate double was shown on Xavier Lee, and the bounce goes the Crimson's way late in the shot clock. Akpara fakes the three, gives back to Mack. Malik Mack sees the double, slips it through to Akpara. Tough catch. Akpara in drive mode, spins, fakes, and missed the layup. Great look for Akpara, but he couldn't convert. Lee, crossover, over Ajibo. That one wouldn't go. And a little stutter in the air as well to just wait out Ajibo. Mack to the baseline, and I believe we're going to get a foul call. It's going to be on Zach Martini. That is his second foul, first of the half. Joel Godet had a chance to check in with both coaching staffs at halftime. Joel, what did you find out? Ben spoke to Matt Fraschilla from Tommy Amaker's staff at Harvard. All came down to shooting for Princeton. Obviously, they hit nine threes in the first half. Just have to do a better job finding shooters and getting through screens, dealing with some physicality. On the flip side, had a chance to speak to Luke Gore for Princeton, and he said... Listen, the ball's popping. When the ball's moving, it makes it really easy for us to shoot. We've got five shooters out there. That's what they do. Well, five shooters. Harvard counters with a Justice Ajabo jam. That almost turned the clock off here. Yeah, I think it did for a half second. Nice set play off the inbound. Little give and go with Malik back. Baseline drive. No one getting up to contest that. Just the second bucket for Ajabo today. Harvard looking for a stop on this end. Lee on Ajabo with five to shoot. Drives. Rejected again. That's what the big man does. It's just so impressive because that's what Lee is supposed to do. Get a big man on you. Drive. Use your speed. Take him to the rim. But Ajabo, just look at his size. The recovery to get there. Big denial. 
Pierce, open cut to the rim. He shorted the layup and then is fouled on the putback attempt. Great play design there for Princeton to get Pierce an open look. Yeah, it's the cut as well, where Harvard just a little bit stagnant off that inbound. The foul is on Ajabo. Princeton 6 of 7 from the free throw line. Lee is 4 of 5. First trip for Pierce. 73% on the season. Part of the reason the Tigers were able to pull away from Yale last weekend, they went 17 of 18 at the free throw line. They make the winning plays late in games. One of the best in the country at shooting free throws. Right on cue, Pierce misses the second. 11-point lead for the Tigers. Inside Ajabo, double team, kick out Mac. Lesmon open for three, rolls out. Shots have not fallen tonight for the Crimson from outside. That's a good look. Off a double underneath. Move the ball quickly. Get it around the perimeter. Good job to identify the open shooter. and One that Harvard needs to knock down. Three-point shooting. Entirely the difference is Martini short on that one. Ajabo all alone for the rebound. Mack one on four. Kicks it out. Apara from deep. Short. And secured by Pierce. Another one and done for Harvard on the offensive end. Yeah, double double watch now for Caden Pierce, 14 and 8. He's got the mismatch with Mack. He wants it inside. Peters floats it. Pierce catches. Ajabo switch back on him. Alaco off the screen. Back to Pierce. Fires from deep. And it bounces short. Pierce started three for three. That's his first miss from beyond the arc. Tyler Simon has two of Harvard's four threes. Ajabo double team, threw it away. Lee racing back the other way. Tricky dribble. Now attacks the rim. Stripped and fouled by Simon. See if it's a shooting foul or not. It is the second on Tyler Simon. Second of the half. And another quiet stretch offensively here to start the second half for the Crimson. They're just out of sorts right now offensively. Trying to utilize the paint. Getting the ball down to the block where Princeton... Has been doubling, and Princeton now getting in the way of a passing lane, getting that steal, and Xavier Lee as well. Just that quick little stutter step, stop and start. You see Tyler Simon arguing he got plenty of the ball. A little bit of arm first. Lee up to 25. Free throw off, rebound tipped out by Jacob Huggins. His first action coming in. Mack. Trying to push the pace a little bit. Lee picks off the pass. Mack floated that one a little bit. Lee read it well. The pace is good if it's controlled, but just out of sorts at the moment. Peters a deep three. That one won't go. Mack again tries to run three on three. Inside out dribble. The kick to Lesmond. Lee quickly out on the shooter. Lee Lesmond just two points today. Kick ball on Lee as that one went into the post. That'll get us to an early timeout. Princeton maintaining its 12-point lead through the first four minutes and change in the second half. Tigers 47, Crimson 35 here on ESPN. The ball needs to get into the hands of Sean Matson. One more scoreless frame. Point of the game we saw in the first meeting where Princeton was able to break things open. That has not been the case early here in the second. Go back to the first meeting this year. Crimson shot the three well in the first half, did not in the second. A par of the handoff. Ajabo again with a thunderous slam. Just good movement. Tic-tac-toe underneath. Extra pass. Ajabo. They are getting him a touch on every possession. Trying to utilize the paint inside to out. Walko muscling his way in. Extra pass to the corner. Dalen Davis joins the three-point party. That's huge to have someone not named Xavier Lee or Caden Pierce knock down a big triple. Lesmond pulls up inside the line. Missed it short. Lee with a rebound and the push. Settle things down. Calls Huggins to set the screen. Lee on Simon. Davis again. Has Ajabo in front of him. I don't think anyone relishes that challenge. Davis gets it again. Again, stares down Ajabo and says, who do I give the ball to? 
Xavier Lee, that's a good choice. And after what he saw, what Ajibo was able to do to Xavier Lee on the dribble drive. Davis from deep, hits again! Lee got him a better look, and Davis hits his second straight three. Those are the trips that are just frustrating for the Crimson. Defend well, nothing really going on for 25 seconds, then a knockdown from 25 feet. Simon reverses it up and in. Nice night for Tyler Simon. He's the first Harvard player in double figures with 11. He's not just out there filling a role in the absence of Chandler PJ. He is playing a huge role. A couple of triples in the first half. He's one off of his career high. Lee tripped up, didn't get a whistle. Davis, a nice spin move, floats it over Ajibo, won't go. And Mack pulls away the rebound. A couple tricky dribbles to escape the traffic. Ajibo shows the screen. Mack fading on the pull up, missed the shot. Lee comes down with a miss. I haven't seen Mack shoot the ball that much. And it's another one and done for the Crimson. And Davis with an early heat check missed the shot. Simon there with a rebound. We saw Mitch Henderson right away just put his head down when that shot was let go. He could understand using the hot hands. Lesman the drive. Thought about the highlight reel jam. Loose ball to Ajabo. Akpara in the corner. Has Lee in front. Backs him down. Lee falls down. Akpara kicks it out. Lesmon with seven to shoot. He drives, finds Ajabo, and he's fouled. Dalen Davis says, you're not turning off the clock again. <laughs> well, just a better job from the Crimson. It looks more controlled offensively. Extra passing, spreading things out, utilizing mismatches. If you're going to give up points to Ajabo, this is where you'd rather give them up if you're Princeton. Just 47% this year. At the line, we talk about this Princeton team of the line, second of the nation, Harvard down under 250. Malik Mack going to get a break here. Xavier Nesbitt comes in along with Denim Wojcik. Lesmond will come out as well. A couple changes for Princeton, too. Jack Scott is back in along with Blake Peters. Zach Martini, Luca Asnesteski waiting to check in here for Ajabo. So knows he's sort of at the end of his shift. It's been a solid one for him to start the second half as he makes the second free throw. Seven points for Ajabo, four blocks as well. Yeah, patrolling the paint again, and he has been put in more uncomfortable positions. Having to defend out at 20 feet and the block on Xavier Lee was the standout one where he was taken to the rim on a dribble drive and stuck right with it A little bit of early ball pressure from Harvard before dropping back Tigers have played with a double-digit lead the entire way here in the second half Lee turns the corner slips through the defense and will go to the free throw line again Xavier Lee about as tough as they come mentioned just getting through screens at halftime what Harvard needed to do. Ace Mastesky just on the wrong side there of the ball screen and gave the right side to Xavier Lee. And Denim Wojcik trying to track back as well. Just a good job to eliminate two defenders out of play. And Xavier Lee tough but fearless as well. He'll go up there. Doesn't matter the matchup. Whether it's guard on guard or he's taking on a six foot eleven big man underneath. He likes his odds. Spent some time with Team Canada over the summer. Played in the FIBA U19 World Cup. Native of Toronto hits the front end. And even when everything else has been going wrong for Princeton, Xavier Lee has been going right. He's just been the bailout. And the three he hit from almost 30 feet right at the end of the buzzer when they've needed a bucket. He just looked around outside of Caden Pierce. Dalen Davis, nice little stretch here in the second half to get up to eight points. But just three from Peters, three from Martini. So it really hasn't been spreading the wealth we're used to. It's a Princeton team that can get offense up and down the lineup. Akpara muscling his way in, floats it up. Shot altered by Martini, and Davis pulls down the rebound. Quick push the other way by Davis. Lost the handle for a moment. Able to reset out to Peters, and again it's Lee. Matched up with Akpara this time, wants the screen from Scott. Wojcik crowding him. Lee doesn't care. Gets it away to Scott, crashing down the lane. Quick hop step and a layup. Nice pivot there by Jack Scott. First bucket for the sophomore. And 
after it was Xavier Lee just drawing attention, and then Jack Scott knew exactly what he was doing, getting into the paint. Apara fakes the three, takes the three, and too strong on the three. Race for the loose ball. Peter is able to tiptoe the sideline. Yeah, just a little bit one and done right now for the Crimson on offense. Trying to play too much hero ball, not spreading the ball as much as we saw in the first half. Only three offensive rebounds tonight for the Crimson. Tigers might be looking for the knockout blow early here. Lee with seven to shoot, has the big man on him. Lee, crossover, again, whips it. Scott for three, fouled. Akara got him on the hand, and Jack Scott will have three free throws when we come back. 11.27 to go. Princeton pulling away from Harvard here in Cambridge, getting a boost from Dalen Davis. They're not an at-large team. Basically, I don't know what is one. Princeton Ben has the seventh best winning percentage in Division One, and at one point was eighth in the net. Now, losses to Yale and Cornell has slid Princeton down to 58th in the net. And the big problem on the resume, O and O against Quad One teams. Not only do they have zero Quad One wins, they haven't played a Quad One game, and they will not because they don't have another opportunity on the schedule. Yeah, home games the rest of the way for the Tigers next weekend, hosting Columbia and Cornell, that Cornell game at home. Best opportunity left for the Tigers. Of course, there also will be the Ivy Madness Tournament. That will be played on a neutral court site, but those quad one wins, always so important, and tough to find those sometimes when you're an Ivy League team. Malik Mack comes up short on that three. Well, the biggest thing, too, is just the margin for error that you have when you mention you don't have those quad ones. Talk about bubble watch where other teams in some power six conferences get to play quad one games once a week. So you just aren't fair. Well, we've seen this year Yale, Cornell, and Princeton are top level teams. They could make noise in the NCAA tournament. Princeton did it last year. You would not be surprised whoever got in to the NCAA tournament from the Ivy to make a run. Malako in trouble. Just chucks it at the rim and comes up short. Ajimo crowding him in the finish. Harvard's been better defensively here in the second half, but their offense has gone dead silent. Yeah, I need complimentary basketball right now for the Crimson. Doing a good job holding Princeton to some tough, contested shots, but just nothing falling the other way. Ajavo stuck in the free throw line, got it to Nesbitt. Lesmo kicks it across, swung inside. Ajavo going to work, floated up with the right hand, no. The tip by Ace Nesteski. Nice touch. That's been something that hasn't been there all night. Second chance opportunities. That's just the fourth offensive board for the Crimson. And a bigger lineup having Ajabo and Ace Nesteski out there at the same time. Tommy Hammerker tweaking things, trying to find an answer. We'll see how Princeton chooses to attack it on the other end. Davis drives, kicks. Tough catch, Alaco. Now to Scott. Over to Martini. Three over Ajabo. Is good. Another dagger, only the second bucket for Martini. They're both threes, and that was a big one to stunt any Harvard momentum. Mack inside, through the contact, can't finish. Halfway down, Princeton, it's the skip passes that are just opening things up. The way they lull you to sleep on one side of the court, one quick movement, open shooter, and no matter who it is in this Princeton lineup, one through five, they can knock down threes at a high clip. The Tigers knew it was at stake as Davis misses on that three. Rebound tipped around. Mack has it underneath. And they have played like a team determined to secure their playoff fate tonight. Mack drives through the trees, stripped, and it is stolen away by Peters. And just one and done once again. It's good to have a sense of urgency offensively. We want it to be composed, controlled when you push the tempo. Get good shots, not contested one against three. Walko stumbles, extra pass, Martini fires again, that one won't hit. Harvard just 5 for 17, 0 for 5 from 3 in the second half. Lesmond fakes, looking for help to Nesbitt. Ajabo calls for it, gets it inside. Turns in on Martini, fades away and misses off the side iron. It's 
what Harvard wanted, though. Get it inside one on one for Ajabo. Just good defense to force him to pull up the fadeaway. To Joel's point about Princeton being in at large, the point really is moot if the Tigers go on and win the Ivy League tournament again. But to do that, they're going to have to win two games. Might have to go through both Yale and Cornell, depending on how the seeds fall. And that's why having the regular season championship so important because what the road can be for the Ivy League championship. But uh, Princeton closing in on punching their spot at Ivy Madness. Well, they're going to gain a game on either Yale or Cornell tonight. Those two teams playing each other, and Princeton in control here in Cambridge. Their only other loss outside of the Ivy League was against St. Joseph's. That was a close game as well. And Wojcik with it here. Harvard looking for anything on the offensive end. Ajabo muscles it out to Akpara. He fakes the three, attacks the rim, and is fouled. He will go to the line. Contact that time from Vernon Collins, the sophomore from North Carolina. So Mitch Henderson obviously comfortable enough with the lead right now. He's going to go a little bit deeper into his bench. Yeah, absolutely, and especially the way that Harvard has gone stale offensively. And more presence underneath from Vernon Collins. First time we've seen him tonight. Good to see Chisamak Parra back to his feet. But again, it's just been a lot of tough dribble drives. One guy trying to create the offense to facilitate things for Harvard. It's been a tough night for Akpara. Three for 11 from the field. One for five from three. Princeton has dared him to beat them from the outside. And He's been up and down with the three-point shot this year. And Malik Mack as well on the other side. Only nine field goal attempts. That's low for his standards. Parra comes up empty at the line. I mean, Harvard can ill afford at this stage. Xavier Lee, Caden Pierce both back out there. The only double-digit scores for Princeton, but that's really all they've needed. Both on double-double watch as well. Now is the point of the game where Princeton will get into their slow pace. No hurry offensively, but they still get a good shot. That's what's been important tonight. Getting makes late in the shot clock. Lee slips it up. No, Wojcik crashes hard for the rebound. He looks to push. Finds Akpara. Swinging around Lesbian. In the corner, Tyler Simon. Back up top to Akpara. No time to waste here for the Crimson. Akpara driving kick. Lesmo fakes the three. Takes the two. That one goes. Just the second bucket for Les Paul. Yeah, important make for him. It's been a slow night, especially behind the arc. But that was better from the Crimson. Not in a hurry. Still with some tempo, some urgency, but getting a good shot. Davis passes up the open three to burn a little more clock. Ajabo out there as well. Lee into the corner. Pierce got it back to Lee. Chasing inside. He hangs. Leaves it short. Akara tips it away to Simon. Wojcik, quick pull up three, couldn't bank it in. Simon only got a hand on it, and Davis says, let's take a beat here. Uh, Princeton almost seems like they're content where they're just going to hold the ball for 25 seconds. They trust their defense to hold on to this lead. Nice move by Davis. Missed the layup, though. Simon bumped down. Foul will be against Collins, already his second. Only the 15th foul on Princeton. Another area where the Tigers have been extremely successful tonight. They've doubled up Harvard in terms of free throw attempts, even though Princeton hasn't shot the ball from the free throw line as well as they typically do. Yeah, it's been an off night. You see the five misses just shooting 69% from the line for the Tigers, but getting to the line through that contact. There's also been a couple of fouls on threes on the way. As Mom step back from three, cash. Well, that's the three that Harvard has been waiting for, but is it too little, too late for the Crimson? Tommy Amaker will take a timeout, and we will take it as well. Harvard trying to mount a frantic late comeback. And be a tied for the four spot at four and five. The Crimson could very well be two and seven. What's also been impressive for the Crimson this year, 
not must wins in early season, but there's been games that have felt like must wins. At the Palestra against Penn, both those games against Columbia, able to pull out big wins when they needed to, high levels. In an important game taking place in New York City tonight between Columbia and Brown, those are the two teams really vying with Harvard for that final seed likely in Ivy Madness. And of course, it's a tie game late in the second half. Brown and Harvard still will meet next weekend. The Bears won the early season matchup here at Levitas. Well, Brown's a team I think a lot of people wrote off just based on the non-conference record. They came in only a couple wins under their belt, but a Brown sneaky team. Keno Lilly Jr., one of the best scorers in the Ivy League. Xavier Lee also can make claim to that title, but he's off on that three-pointer. 27 for Lee, 22 in the first half, though, so... Harvard's done the job defensively. They just have not gotten enough on this end of the floor. Coaches will always say, get it to 10 by the under four. Wojcik off on the three, out of bounds, off of Owako. So opportunity on the extra possession here for the Crimson. Interesting, no Malik Mack on the floor right now for Harvard. I figure if they were going to make a comeback, he would be a guy to key it. Simon, Wojcik, Ace Nesteski, Akpara, and Lesmond. Wojcik on the catch behind the back pass. Ace Nesteski spins and is fouled. The Aussie will go to the free throw line. Foul on Zach Martini is his third. Sixth on Princeton. So Harvard did the bonus for the rest of the way. But again, against the team that doesn't foul very much. Yeah, discipline team in Princeton. A nice nifty play there by Denim Wojcik. Behind the back, one touch pass. One way to open up this Princeton defense. Quick ball movement, especially underneath. Grace Nesteski hits from the free throw line. 42% from the line on the year. Peters is going to come back in for Dalen Davis. So, Mitch Henderson going to bring out the starters again to see out the final five minutes here. Free throws good. Half a dozen for East Nesteski off the bench, and Harvard will bring pressure. And Harvard taking advantage of this slow spurt by Princeton. Almost five minutes scoreless. Martini easily out of the trap, back in the hands of Alaco, who again wants to settle it down. It just seems like Princeton took the foot off the accelerator offensively. With still plenty of time to go in the game. Pierce looking for a handoff. Doesn't have an option yet. Now Lee comes to get it. Lee to shoot. Xavier Lee's time to shine again. Kicks it. And we got a whistle and a out of bounds call. And another rare turnover, just the fifth from Princeton, but Harvard now has a chance to make it a 10 point game. And Harvard making this interesting. And it's really been defensively slowing down Princeton. And it's led to. Harvard being able to creep back offensively. Here comes Malik Mack off the bench. Simon driving kick and a foul called on Xavier Lee. The first against Lee and Simon to the line for one and one. So Harvard, to their credit, plenty of scoring from Xavier Lee, but in this second half, they've almost made this Princeton offense one-dimensional. Still going through Xavier Lee, of course, but just five points in this second half. Simon, the only man in double figures for Harvard. Two for three at the line after that make. After a blistering first half, Princeton shooting just 22% in the second half. Simon out, Wojcik back in for defense. A career high, 13 points from Tyler Simon tonight. Started early for him, playing a big role. He was the tempo of this offense. Knocked down a couple of threes. He's called on for some corner dribble drive, so he's in there in the absence of Chandler P.J., but he wasn't just there to fill a spot. He played a big role, and he's playing a big role tonight. No trouble with the Harvard press. Tigers again will burn the clock. A lock up. Back to Lee, under 10. Goes at Wojcik. Shake and bake to the right hand. He elevates and kicks. Three-pointer. Peters got it. That's a money shot from Blake Peters. And that's more like it. Dribble drive kick out for a while in this second half. It had felt like Princeton was playing not to lose. Akpara backing in on Pierce. Ace Nesteski to answer. Rolls out. 
Huge sequence there. Tigers get a big three on one end. Harvard misses on the other. Now it feel like it could be a big swing back in Princeton's favor. Get a bucket here. Turn points into stops into more points. And just good character shown right now by Mitch Henderson's team as Harvard was getting at the closest they had been in a while to respond with a big triple. Alaco escapes the double team. Got it to Martini with five to shoot. Alaco has to pull up, and he is short on the three. Alcara muscles in the rebound. Three minutes to go. Mack, Lesmond fires short. And racing back for the rebound is Peters. In the big moments, the veterans come to play for Princeton. And a big time. The two seniors on this roster playing big minutes in. It's what you need Harvard to do. Try and turn them over. Princeton team that takes great care of the basketball, which is why it's so tough to make these comebacks late. Lee got caught in midair. Wojcik goes crashing into Alaco. That is his third foul. It is the fourth foul, fifth foul, excuse me, against Harvard. The Tigers, just a couple minutes, a big bucket by Blake Peters to help salt this one away. Princeton by 13 here in Cambridge. You know, when, when Title IX was passed, I was about five years old. And even at... Likes to control tempo, they don't hurt themselves. They make right plays, they don't turn the ball over, they don't follow you, so they don't give you opportunities for easy baskets. Tigers, two minutes and 37 seconds from earning a season sweep. Lee trapped, has to call timeout. Mitch Henderson has a boat full of those, so no worries burning one here. The Tigers have really taken the air out of the basketball here in the second half. They've only scored three points in the last eight minutes, so to Harvard's credit there, but Princeton just holding them off on the other end. Look at what's coming up. You're talking about those three teams in Princeton, Yale, and Cornell, and that one seed is so important, you can avoid playing one of the other two in the first round. Cornell trying to fend off a hard-fought effort from Yale at home. That's a two-point game with seven minutes to play. The loser of that one will find themselves tied with Princeton. Again, barring something crazy here in the next 222 is a shot clock violation against the Tigers. Well, this game has been there for the taking for the Crimson for a while in the second half. Princeton just no urgency in offense. I know they're not the fastest team in the country, but just 25 seconds not trying to accomplish anything offensively besides waste time. Back unable to finish through the contact. Then he just shoulders Lee down from behind. Foul on Mac is his second. And that will put Lee at the line on the other end. <laughs> Check that. It's only the sixth team foul. So that was the last one Harvard had to give. Ace Nesteski, Lesmond, going to come back in. Akpara will sit, as will Malik Mack. Xavier Nesbitt returns as well. So this is the group that sort of gave Harvard just a little bit of a spark. But instead, as tough as. Princeton has had it offensively in the second half. They have made life tough on the Crimson on the other end as well. And I think that's why they started playing the way they were offensively. They had confidence on defense. They could hold off Harvard in this game. Just played blemish-free offensively down the stretch. Well, the Tigers just playing keep away. Lee tried to hand it off underneath. Off of Pierce out of bounds. Tough second half for Caden Pierce. He's only scored one point. He started the game with three threes in the opening, what, six minutes? He was money to start this game. But this game has just fallen into an offensive shell in this second half. 21 points for Princeton, 20 for Harvard. And this type of tempo, not the breakneck pace we see from a team like Cornell. This is just fine for the Tigers down the stretch. Harvard trying to find a way to get shots up quickly. Wojcik stuck with the ball. Simon in the corner, trapped now. Back out to Wojcik, 12 to shoot. Wojcik behind the back dribble, attacks, hangs, just throws it at the rim. Ace Nesteski there with a the rebound, then fumbled it away. And Simon will give the foul on Peters. And that you feel like may have been the last little bit of opportunity for Harvard. And yeah, now the opportunity for a really good free throw shooting team who just put this game on ice. And that possession... Right at the end, as Tommy Amaker will go deep into his bench, but taking 20 seconds to get an Allen by his two-point shot. 
Well, as the subs come in, Harvard will look ahead to now what is it now an even more important game tomorrow against a Penn team that they were able to score a road win against earlier this year. Penn team that's going to be motivated. Penn team coming off a win tonight against Dartmouth and a Penn team that has really been one of the surprises this year for the wrong reason in the Ivy League. They've been in that conversation as the fourth seed in Ivy Madness for a few seasons now and it's not gone the way of the Quakers so far in 2024. Now, barring, again, a crazy finish to the regular season, they are going to miss the Ivy, Ivy League tournament for the first time since it came into play in the Ivy League. Of course, a big part of that, Clark Slacker missed a big chunk of the Ivy League season, their leading score. Nesbitt fading away from the mid-block. Doesn't get that one to go. Jack Scott pulls in the rebound. As you said, a Penn team coming in motivated, also coming in off an 80-point performance, one of their best offensive outings in Ivy League play. So that is not going to be an easy out for Harvard tomorrow. and They're going to be fighting tooth and nail to the end, it feels like, to try to earn a spot in the Ivy League tournament. With Columbia Brown coming down to the stretch. Meanwhile, the win tonight for Princeton officially locks them in. So three of the four spots are filled. Yale, Cornell, Princeton all booking their ticket to New York City. And the Tigers are going to be tied for second place with either Yale or Cornell after tonight. Another three-pointer fired up off the mark. Rebound tipped out of bounds by Christian Rich. I actually say it went off of Jack Scott. Yeah, Jack Scott was going to inbound that ball. He was just as surprised as anyone, but Princeton was just able to put the clamps on this game. Winning effort through 30 minutes. The last 10 minutes was just seeing off a last surge that never came. Nice drive and finish by Peyton Pitts. First year out of Chicago gets his first career bucket, and that's how this one will come to an end. Close games the last couple years, but not this time around. Princeton puts on another clinic. They pull away late in the first half. They don't let hard.